Hello everyone! In this video, I'll show you how to customize a JTable cell renderer using Java Swing and Flatloft. We have a table that displays staff information and we want to customize a status column to show different icons and colors based on each staff member's current status. Here I've created a simple JFrame for testing. Let's run it. As you can see, we have an empty frame. Next, we're going to add a new J table. But before that, we need to create a default table model. For the table columns, we have name, location, position, and status. So after creating the default table model, we create a J table using that model. Then add the table to the frame by wrapping it in a new J scroll pane. Now let's run it. As you can see, we have a basic table displayed inside the frame. Next, we'll create an enum to represent the different status values for the status column. We'll name the enum stas status. So we have three status values, active, on left, and inactive. Next, we add the data to this table model. But since I already have this simple data, I just need to copy it and paste it here. Now we could run it. Here we can see the full sample data. However, for the status column, we need to customize the table cell renderer. I've already copied the SVG icons to the resources folder. We have three icons for the staff status. Then, we also need to add additional field values to this enum. The text field is used for the label display. The color field defines the status color and the icon field is used for the labels icon. Then generate the enum constructor and assign the value here. First, we start by updating active. We give it a display name active, a green color using new color, 59, 155, 60, and the icon file name, active.svg. So we can copy it and change this to on leave and this for inactive. Here, change the display name and change this for on leave color as orange 255, 164, 75, and for inactive color as red 255, 75, 101, and for this icon name as leave.svg, and this icon name is inactive.svg. For the icon, we use string as value here, so we need to change this icon type to the string. Then, new this icon with flat SVG icon, and we provide the path of the icon location. For the scale value, we use 0 0.35, and for the icon color, it default is gray. So we need override these color, so we can use method set color filter. I've prepared the code for the table badge cell renderer. You'll find the download link in the description below. Please copy it into your project to continue. After copying the code into your project, let's go back to the staff status enum. We need to have this enum implement the table cell renderer.info interface. Next, we need to implement the abstract methods. There are three methods to override. Get text returns the text, get color returns a color object, get icon returns an icon object. Now that we've finished creating the staff status, let's go to the main class. We need to apply the custom cell renderer to the table. To do that, 
Just call table badge cell renderer dot apply and pass in the table object along with staff status dot class. Let's run the project. As you can see, the custom renderer hasn't been applied to the table yet. There's one more thing we need to do. Override the get column class method in our table model. This method is important because it tells the table what type of data each column contains. In our case, the status column is at index 4, and it uses the staff status enum. So we check if the column index is 4, and if it is, we return staff status dot class. For all other columns, we just call the superclass method. The table now correctly applies the custom cell renderer to the status column. But to make it look even better, we'll add some style to the table using flat loft style properties. Now let's add some style to our table using flat laugh properties. First, we call table.putClient property with flat client properties dot style. Inside the style string, we set row height to 30 pixels, which makes each row taller and easier to read. Next, we enable show horizontal lines by setting it to true. This adds horizontal lines between the rows. Then, we enable show vertical lines and set it to true, so vertical lines appear between the columns. These simple style changes help make the table clearer and more visually appealing. We see that the horizontal lines are not drawing in the status column. To fix this, we need to add one more style property, intercell spacing. We set its value to 1, 1 to create spacing between cells, allowing the lines to be displayed correctly. Now, the horizontal lines show properly in the status column, and the table looks neat and well-defined. We can also try changing to different themes to see how the table looks with other styles. Thanks for watching this tutorial. If you found it helpful, please like and subscribe for more coding tips and tutorials. See you in the next video.